I now look to Dr. Lisa McKenzie to close the case for the proposition. Well, thank you, Oxford Union, for inviting this working class woman from a mining community, from a striking miner. My father was a striking miner. My grandfather was a miner. My great grandfather was a miner. And I worked in a factory making tights for the first nine years when I left school without any education in 1984 during the miners' strike. So you might think that that gives me the argument for this side of the, the house. But actually what I want to do is to tell you now that there is no slippage of class. Class is static. It is where it always has been. It is the centre of power in British society. Everyone in this room tonight, wherever I speak, I speak a lot about class because I am the working class representative. I am the academic that they need to invite because there are very few of us. So I am saying to you now, the, you, we might have these exceptional people here tonight, but I know as a working class woman, I am the exception because I'm stood here tonight. I'd like to address a couple of points from the opposition. Number one, the, the speaker that made the clever point about dinner and supper clearly knows nothing about being working class because the correct term for that meal is tea. <laughs> And then also I'd like to address the, speak, the first speaker, <laughs> Alan Sugar, John Terry, Wayne Rooney, where are they? Are they working class? Are they middle class? Are they upper class? These are extremely wealthy individuals, but they are laughed at, they are ridiculed, and they are de derided constantly. John Terry is laughed at and derided because he used his money, his wealth, his acquisition of wealth, his talent. Those of you that believe in entrepreneurialism will believe that John Terry deserves every penny that he earns because he has some sort of distinct talent. You will believe that. But when he builds a cul-de-sac of homes, so him and all his family can live on the same street, they are laughed at, they are ridiculed. Their class position remains static. He is wealthy, but he is working class. Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney has a distinct talent. Those of you, again, on the right, would tell me that as an entrepreneurial spirit, he deserves every pound that he earns. But Wayne Rooney is stupid. Wayne Rooney is a gorilla. Wayne Rooney is debased to the working class man, the violent, the angry, the stupid. Do not tell me that these stereotypes do not exist in Britain today, because I can stand here for the rest of the evening and I can give you them constantly over and over again. So, we can dismiss these arguments so far. Do we want to talk about the acquisition of wealth? Perhaps we do, and I think we should. Does the acquisition... So, the acquisition of wealth. Let's talk about the facts. Inequality has never been wider than it is today. Inequality is wide. So, how far are the working class really becoming socially mobile. How far? And I think what I'd like to do is stand in solidarity with the sister that spoke earlier from Durham, who was one of the very few people here that understood that the class system is a system. It is a system of power. It is a system of the relationships of power between people. And then also, I think what we need to do is the other point, is we need to think 
about this idea of aspiration. Aspiration has been spoken a lot of tonight. This side of the house loves it. They love aspiration. They love social mobility because it gets them off the hook. It gets them off the hook because it moves away from the system to the individual. We can show that we have movement. We can show that we have a social mobility. People are moving. If we believe in social mobility, if we believe in aspiration, I believe in neither. I do not want any social mobility. I have been socially mobiled up to here. I am sick of being socially mobiled. I am sick of the aspiration of leaving my working class baggage behind me, my accent, my family. My family are not baggage. They are the people that I love. My community are not baggage. They are the people that have cared for me when I have grown. My history is not baggage. It is the thing that keeps me going every day and makes me proud of who I am, which is a working class academic. So therefore, there is no choice but to vote for the House this evening because the class system is static. Social mobility is a lie. Meritocracy does not happen. Mobility means movement. Those of you, you're all from Oxford, you all have a stake in this debate or you wouldn't even be here. Look around you and look who is not here. Look at the people who are not here. You are here because you have a stake in this debate. You're from Oxford, you understand what mobility means. It means movement. There is no movement. Moving upwards does not mean, is not mobility. Mobility is about moving in and out and up and down. And until the middle class allow their stupid children to fail, we will not have any mobility. <laughs> the class war so I'm going to finish now. I don't, need, I don't need my full time because I have the conviction of the working class woman that can stand in front of you tonight and can tell you that it is static. I met Jonathan Dimbleby the other week. He thought it was hilarious that he'd met a working class academic. Couldn't understand it. How can you be a working class academic, he said. You've got a PhD. My response was, working class people can read books. <laughs> Friends and comrades, the, work, the class war is not over. The class war is raging. I heard it outside. <laughs> I heard the voices of Oxford outside. Did you hear them? I heard the class war and they are winning. So my friends, I'm going to leave tonight with there must be a class war, but it must be on the, work, the terms of the working class. We must be proud of who we are, we must stand for who we are, and we must fight for the inequality, the undeserved inequalities that we face every day. Thank you.